Back in 2016, Apple introduced AirPods. They were one of the first pair of truly wireless headphones with no wire connecting the two earbuds together. But this cutting edge technology didn't come cheap. The AirPods were priced at $159, which caused many people online to dismiss the headphones, since you could buy a wired pair with much better sound quality for the same price. The design of AirPods were also mocked, being compared to Q-tips and toothbrush heads. Commenters online were certain that no one would want to wear such ridiculous looking headphones. But as with most Apple haters, they turned out to be wrong. AirPods became a runaway success, and they've since received several updates and iterations. So in this video, I'm going to explain the history of AirPods. This is Greg with Apple Explained, and I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This was the first place topic of the last voting poll, and if you didn't get to participate, make sure you're subscribed so future polls can show up in your mobile activity feed. All right, now the AirPods history may not be particularly long, as you guys have mentioned, stretching back to just 2016, but it is dense, filled with three new product releases and one refresh. So let's start at the beginning. At an Apple event in September 2016, everyone was expecting the iPhone 7's introduction, which ended up being controversial to say the least, but what we didn't expect was a new Apple accessory called AirPods. They were actually introduced right after we found out about the iPhone's missing headphone jack. So you can see why some people were a little suspicious about Apple's intentions, since they essentially created a problem that didn't exist and immediately provided a $159 solution. I don't actually subscribe to that idea personally, but it was a sentiment shared among many in the tech community at the time, and it's important to understand since it affected people's judgment of the AirPods. Some were immediately put off that Apple was trying to manipulate users into buying their quote, overpriced AirPods, so they used any justification possible to dismiss the product and advise others not to buy it. Common arguments included, well, you can buy wired headphones with way better sound quality than AirPods for the same price, and oh my gosh, people are going to lose those tiny earbuds right after they buy them, and no one's going to spend $160 to have Q-tips sticking out of their ears. So long story short, the most vocal people online were criticizing the AirPods every chance they could. But something happened that I don't think even Apple expected. They achieved god-tier meme status. <laughs> AirPods were memefied more than any other product in Apple history, and it earned Apple an insane amount of free advertising that instantly made AirPods a well-known product in countries around the world. But I don't think memes are enough to make something successful. A product has to offer some measurable benefit to users that makes their friends and family want to buy it too. And the AirPods offered exactly that by being completely wireless. For decades, people had to deal with tangled headphones, fraying headphones, plugging and unplugging, cords that got caught on random things and sent your headphones flying out of your ear, and even limitations on how far you could go without your device. I think that's the quality most AirPods haters were underestimating. People really hated wired earbuds, and once they experienced the convenience, freedom, and simplicity of true wireless headphones, they simply couldn't go back to the tangled, tethered, wired headphone life. The visceral benefits of AirPods were clear the moment people used them, and they had no problem paying the $160 price of entry. So while AirPods were initially seen as an overpriced, silly-looking joke, they quickly became the most in-demand headphones in the world. Apple couldn't keep them in stock for months after their release, and once they did catch up, demand spiked again in late 2016 during the holiday season. This was the beginning of AirPods, and it catapulted Apple into the headphone industry in a way that no one really expected. After just two years, Apple surpassed Sony to become the top headphone manufacturer in the world, all due to the wild popularity of AirPods, whose users were already hungry for more from Apple. Some people, myself included, wanted an updated pair with an in-ear design, with others wanting color options, and Apple gave us none of that in 2019 with the second generation AirPods. We were disappointed that the design hadn't changed and there was no black option, but the Gen 2 model did have some nice improvements, like an H1 processor that brought voice-activated Siri instead of long tapping on an earbud, Bluetooth 5 connectivity, 50% more battery on phone calls, faster device connection times, and the announced messages with Siri feature that arrived in iOS 13.2. It allowed Siri to read your incoming messages automatically and even reply to them just by using your voice. 
The Gen 2 AirPods also included an optional wireless charging case as a $40 premium, totaling $200, or you can get them with the standard charging case for $160. Now, if you're enjoying this video and you're wondering how to create similar YouTube content yourself, I highly recommend checking out the classes on Skillshare. You can watch video workshops on storytelling, color grading, and YouTube fundamentals. I actually used the Logotype Masterclass workshop with Jessica Heesh to help develop and refine my Apple Explained logo for this channel. And receiving feedback from other Skillshare members was extremely helpful. Also, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. All right, now while many people were disappointed with the marginal Generation 2 AirPods update, Apple was working quickly behind the scenes to deliver two completely new models. The first was AirPods Pro, released in October 2019. They cost $250 and delivered on two things that many original AirPod users were requesting, an in-ear design and active noise cancellation. But those weren't the only new features. AirPods Pro also had transparency mode that allowed users to hear everything going on around them, an auto EQ setting, IPX4 water resistance, a wireless charging case as standard, interchangeable silicone ear tips, and a new force sensor on the stems. Instead of tapping on the earbud to control audio like with the standard AirPods, users could squeeze the stems on AirPods Pro, which many people found to be easier and more reliable. But there was a common issue with this model when it came to the silicon ear tips. Users found that when running, chewing, talking, or laughing, the AirPods Pro would slowly slip out of their ear. Some even had them fall out while sitting still, which is really strange considering Apple sold in-ear headphones back in 2008 that fit securely in almost everyone's ear. I was hoping they'd use a similar design with the AirPods Pro, but they didn't. Despite this issue, many people love their AirPods Pro since they deliver incredible sound quality for their size and the best noise cancellation of almost any earbud on the market. But I think the most underrated feature is transparency mode. Many headphones have this capability, but it makes you feel like your head is in a fishbowl, amplifying your own voice while making ambient noise sound unnatural. With AirPods Pro, many have found that transparency mode sounds exactly like real life, and that makes them even more convenient when quickly ordering at Starbucks or hearing someone talk. So with two AirPod Pro models under their belt, Apple geared up for their biggest release yet in December 2020 with the AirPods Max. These were over-ear headphones with a price tag of $550, significantly more expensive than competing headphones from Sony or Bose, which retailed for around $350. But despite that $200 premium, the AirPods Max sold out just hours after being released. Customers who didn't order the product right away were forced to wait up to three months for delivery, and that resulted in high resale values on websites like StockX. But what caused all this commotion to begin with? Well, I think it was a combination of factors. First, rumors of Apple creating over-ear headphones circulated for over a year, causing the hype around AirPods Max to reach higher than any model before. Also, it was the first Apple-branded headphone to be offered in different colors. Going back to the original iPod in 2001, there's never been any Apple headphones in any color other than white. But with AirPods Max, they gave people what they've wanted for years, headphones in gray, blue, green, and pink. But that's just the beginning. The vast majority of over-ear headphones are made from plastic, while the AirPods Max are made from aluminum and stainless steel. There have also been issues with audio control. Some headphones are moving to touch controls, while others have several physical buttons, both of which can result in a clumsy listening experience. But AirPods Max features just one button and one digital crown. Users don't even have to turn the headphones on or off since they automatically go to sleep when not in use. When it comes to performance, AirPods Max has proven to have better sound quality and better noise cancellation than the competition, with the inclusion of transparency mode that already led the industry with AirPods Pro. Although one complaint users have had is with the smart case. Typically, over-ear headphones include a hard case with a zipper that shields the entire headphone. But the smart case included with AirPods Max is made from a soft material that only covers the ear cups, leaving the headband exposed. Many reviewers have criticized this design decision, but after using the headphones for two and a half weeks, I have to admit that I like the smart case. While people have been creating hypotheticals about the fabric headband being damaged from exposure, 
I haven't found this to be the case at all. The fabric is protected by the stainless steel frame, which is the most durable part of the headphones. And it's convenient to remove from your bag since the exposed headband doubles as a handle. But the smart case's biggest advantage that I haven't heard anyone mention is that you don't have to resize the headband to fit it inside. With my Bose QC35s, I had to retract the telescoping headband to store them in their case. But when using the smart case, I never had to waste time readjusting the headband. Another issue people have had with AirPods Max is their missing power button, which was rumored to cause excessive battery drain while not in use. Now, the smart case solves this problem by causing the headphones to enter an ultra low power mode when inside, but what if you don't want to bother with the case? Well, there's been a lot of speculation and misinformation about AirPods Max power management. So much, in fact, that Apple created this support page to clear things up. Under Learn About Battery Life, it says you can expect to get 20 hours of use from AirPods Max or one and a half hours with a five minute charge. Now this is the most important part. If you set your AirPods Max down and leave them stationary for five minutes, they go into a low power mode to preserve battery charge. After 72 stationary hours out of the smart case, your AirPods Max go into a lower power mode that turns off Bluetooth and Find My to preserve battery charge further. If you put your AirPods Max in the smart case when you're not using them, they go into a low power mode immediately to preserve battery charge. After 18 hours in the smart case, your AirPods Max go into an ultra low power mode that turns off Bluetooth and Find My and maximizes battery life. Now, even with this new information, some people think Apple should have just added a power button to keep things simple. But again, after using these headphones for two and a half weeks, I love never having to think about their power state. Just like with previous AirPods, you use them when you want and remove them when you're done. It makes for a frictionless and convenient experience the likes I've never had with a pair of over-ear headphones. Now, it's still too early to say whether or not the AirPods Max are a blockbuster hit like previous models, but so far, demand has been very strong despite the product's high price. When it comes to future models, rumors are predicting an update to AirPods Pro this spring, although we're not exactly sure what changes will be made. So that is the history of AirPods. Thanks for watching till the end, and don't forget to subscribe to help decide which topics I cover in the future.